Hello chess friends and welcome to Zara's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. So in this uh, basics in series uh, I have also covered a couple of games uh, which have a good um, instructive base uh, of, of this uh, basic chess elements. And today I wanted to show you also an instructive chess game which you can in which you can really, really realize this uh, strategical elements because uh, some games they are maybe too tactical they're just about tactics about some tactical shot i wanted to show you some games which have good good uh, strategical elements uh, and many of the strategical elements and they deserve then have to have this title an instructive chess game so today i wanted to show you this game between alexander alihan against fred delhurst yates and here uh, alexander alihan we have d4 so knight on f6 we have c4 common theory when we have an important uh, strategical element i'll pause uh, then i'll stop and then we we'll analyze this uh, very important in the continuation we have e6 knight on f3 we have this counter nimtio indian setup and um, it's all about also your preparation you have to be also prepared in some opening lines here uh, d5 was played and now knight on c3 bishop on e7 and now bishop on g5 and this is now an instructive element already so we are basically battling for the center uh, the center squares are of course e4, e5, uh, d4 and d5. This uh, bishop on g5 is also, not that it only attacks uh, this knight which c controls the center square e4, uh, it also plays sort of a positional pin because uh, if the bishops are traded off, uh, here the dust were bishops, then uh, black will continue with all of his pawns on the light squares and then this uh, light square bishop would be a bad one so um, this light square bishop wouldn't have good diagonals in order to continue here from white's perspective it's better you can play e3 and then place your bishop on, on d3 or on c4 if the position allows it so uh, the activity of this bishop would be simply better uh, than this bishop on c8 so castling uh, now e3 of course also the preparation uh, to uh, develop now finally the slice square bishop and you see now uh, it's still common theory but this opening moves in the theory have their own rules so uh, you, you have already some uh, some tactical and positional ideas in this type of variation c takes on d5 doesn't bring you so much because it releases the pressure in the center and uh, i've also talked uh, many times about this tension in the center if it's possible you should uh, keep the tension in the center because we are basically waiting uh, black to do d tech c4 and then we'll get out with the bishop uh, with the tempo so it's a difference if you get out with the bishop on d3 and then your opponent plays uh, queen on, uh, d tech c4 and then you take uh, the pawn c4 or if you delay uh, this moves uh, for a couple of moves and then your opponent plays d tech c4 and then you finally take this uh, take this pawn c4 so knight from b to d7 we have rook on c1 you see we're keeping the tension and it's also sort of a rule when we have dynamic pawn structures in the center when we have dynamic pawn structures in the center so it means this setup when you see there is a tension in the in the center you should place your pieces really towards the center as much as possible so you see this rook on c1 meets with the idea to place the rook on uh, uh, as center as possible so now you see we are basically playing uh, here with this pieces on uh, four four files the, only the bishop is out of uh, out of this four uh, central files it's on on g5 but the bishop is a long range piece so it means it can also be maybe sometimes on on a1 on b or b2 and still have this good activity so here c6 played by uh, by uh, by black and now queen on c2 again delaying the position in the center a little bit now rook on e8 and now finally we have to play bishop on d3 because your opponent has played a powerful move uh, he played the move rook on e8 and we have now the threat uh, because sometimes the position can get opened and uh, now the the king would be on the same file as the black rook here so that's why you have to develop now fast so bishop on d3 played by alihan uh, here we have d takes c4 and now uh, b takes, bishop takes on c4 now knight on d5 and here knight on e4 here we have f5 kicking away the uh, kicking away the knight but w what uh, what black has created here is this uh, weak uh, weak pawn structure it's the so-called weak complex of pawns 
because he has placed now all of his pawns on light squares, which is very very important uh, we have a, a light square bishop here from black's perspective it's really blocked out by by this pawn so that's why it's possible here first of all to take this bishop on e7 because this bishop on e7 at least had some kind of an activity on these two diagonals so basically we're trading a, a good piece against a good piece also so but we're continuing now uh, the position we have now two centralized knights we have also uh, the bishop very well placed and your opponent has really a weird bishop here on c8 so this was this positional pin here that i've mentioned in the, in the beginning of this video this bishop on g5 waiting this knight to move and then simply trade off this dark square bishop which could be a good one in the continuation of the game so that's why here knight on uh, d2 was played and now b5 you see black is building again another pawn on, on, on the light square and this was his main mistake because here we can really take positionally this is now positional trade of pieces again bishop takes on d5 after c takes on d5 this bishop will never get out of this uh, weak weak pawn structure here so that's why here uh, castling now finally played by by white we have uh, we have a5 and now we are searching for weak squares or weak pawns in your opponent's position so when we have finished our development one of the main strategical idea is to search weaknesses in your opponent's position so what are the weak squares or weak pawns here in black's position the one of the main weaknesses could be this pawn on e6 because it uh, is basically used only as a defender of this two two pawns on d5 and f5 maybe this uh, pawns uh, could be also a weakness but if you attack it attack one of these pawns maybe we can go a uh, a4 so i don't think that uh, black has much weaknesses from a pawn point of view i think that uh, white has uh, black has here more uh, weaknesses when it comes to this weak squares so we have now here c5 weakness we have e5 weakness so these are the main targets you see these are these holes um, in, in 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 black's camp here so that's why knight on b3 was played we are, want to occupy these weaknesses maybe knight on knight on c5 knight on e5 then really, really gain some space a4 was played and now knight on c5 uh, it's a very very good move here after knight takes on c5 queen on c5 queen takes rook takes on c5 and it seems that uh, black has simplified the position by trading off the queen but it's uh, really not good because the rook's activity is now a huge one we have possibilities to uh, uh, doubling up the rooks here and again occupy now this other weakness because this knight on d7 was protecting uh, uh, both of these weaknesses on on c5 and e5 so that's why this position of trade uh, positional trades of pieces by alexander alhim was really good now uh, why uh, black doesn't have any defenders for the weak squares and that's why we should now search for outposts on e5 uh, b4 you see rook on c1 improving the position of these rooks we have now the battery on the semi open on, on an open file knight on e5 bishop on a6 was played but now finally as i said knight on e5 and now we have placed all of our pieces on the best best potential squares rook on b8 was played now f3 uh, getting some uh, some space for the king because uh, you see uh, black has really really dark square problems here in the continuation of the game so here it could be a path for a king to even improve now the position of the king because you have to play also with your king when the position is simplified now there are no uh, no more checkmate tra possibilities here from for both sides so here we are battling maybe just to, in order to grab some pawns just uh, even gain some more space so this game is now uh, all about uh, uh, exploiting your opponent's weaknesses and i think black has many many of them so b3 of course a3 we are not allowing the, the position to get opened on the queen side and this was also a very very important element to put your uh, pawns in in this opposite opposite uh, way it sort of parallel way because we are waiting if your opponent would have played maybe uh, a3 then we play b3 we are just uh, uh, getting uh, getting away and now we have create again 
a block pawn structure so we are not allowing here some mobility of the pawns because also black has uh, played uh, the rook on, on, on b8 and if uh, the position gets open maybe for, for some pawns then uh, your opponent would have some pass pawns so very very nice uh, positional here uh, uh, play here by Alexander Alhin a3 as I mentioned and still again I hope you realized again both of the pawns are on like squares so you see we have this weak complex of pawns here all of the pawns are on like squares so that's why this is really a bad bishop position so although this uh, bishop has a uh, diagonal but one of the best ways to play against the bishop is simply get out of this diagonal so now when we don't have pieces uh, pawns on this diagonal this bishop is really useless it's aiming into nothing it's aiming into air so here h6 was played uh, now king on f2 uh, king on h7 and now h4 i hope you realize that in none of this uh, move that i've explained i've never used uh, some tactical ideas here it's just about this positional ideas and the strategical elements of the chess game so that's why these are these games are really instructive uh, I didn't sh show you if that happened then that will happen if you play this then uh, this will happen if you l uh, play with the rook there then we have this possibility these are really, really this main strategical element and, and I think uh, seeing many of these games uh, will really, really improve your chess skills so here rook on f8 we have king on g3 uh, king on uh, rook on b8 you see black doesn't know what to do here with uh, with his rook we have now rook on uh, c7 we are occupying uh the seventh rank which is also very important while pl playing the rook end game now the idea is maybe to play even rook on rook on e7 attacking as i said the main weakness i told you we have the weak e6 pawn and some weak squares here c5 e5 so now white will exploit all of these weaknesses we have bishop on uh, b5 rook on c5 you see we're getting a little bit more forward we are playing uh, just like in an elevator simply moving a little bit forward then even more forward now we have improved uh, the position of these rooks without losing the activity of these rooks so we have really improved that the knight stays here forever because it's basically unchallengeable uh, you have placed the knight on a dark square and your opponent doesn't have any more the dark square bishop so that's why this is a really a bad bishop position here bishop on a6 we have rook on c6 uh, rook on e8 king on f4 is even possible you see because we have played a very important move uh, h4 uh, preventing some g5 ideas now king on g8 we have h5 getting even more space now it will uh, you see uh, uh, black doesn't have any breathing space at all in the continuation of this game with bishop on f1 of course g3 we have bishop on a6 rook on f7 now it's finally time to double up the rooks we have king on h7 rook on uh, c7 you see how alexander alihin now improved uh, the position of these rooks but he didn't lose the control of the c file because there were also threats uh, for black to somehow infiltrate into game through the c file and then our main weakness is this b2 pawn so if your opponent grabs this b2 pawn this will be game over so that's why here rook on g8 first knight on d7 we have uh, knight on h8 and now knight on f6 very nice move you cannot take then you get checkmated on, on uh, h7 here uh, after knight on f6 you have to move the rook here rook on uh, g7 rook takes on f6 here we have king on e5 very very nice move uh kicking away the rook from from uh, the from this f6 square if you move the, the rook here on uh, f8 then you get checkmated you cut off uh, this very important square uh, by this rook and in this position uh, and after king on e5 black resigns so great great positional game uh, by Alexander Alihin. I hope you uh, learned something from this uh, very instructive game. I enjoyed it a lot because you see it wasn't the Mikhail Tal game, it wasn't a Fisher game at his, in his best days. It was really a positional game, it was really moving forward slowly, not uh, losing, uh, losing the compass in the game and uh, that's why it deserves to be on our uh, instructive chess game list and uh, we will have many many of these games in my basics in chess series. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Meanwhile, you can watch my other basics in chess videos from the series with some other opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. And you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which I show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen in a chess game. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course.